Hey everyone, it's Greg, and today I want to show you how to make a WordPress website from scratch using the Sydney theme. Why would we build a website like this? Well, I could tell you, or I could show you. If you use this tutorial, your website will have all the basics, like a simple text logo or a real logo, a tagline and a navigation menu, and a call to action area, all of which sit on top of this beautiful full screen image slider. And I'm going to show you how to get these pictures for free from a place called pixabay.com. We're going to use images that are so high def, you can see the blades of grass the wolf is sitting on, pick out individual constellations in the night sky, and even see the guests attending this show at the Sydney Opera House. I want your website to look that good. You can make countless buttons that go down the page or click off to go to another page. These just go down the page. You can get icons from Font Awesome, which can be displayed in several ways. So this could be a new product you launch or something like that. You can picture your content here and your brand's messages here instead, of course. And then coming down, just a few more buttons with a parallax image on behind it. Of course, we'll actually learn how to create all of this. And you can move anything around or put it on different pages. We're just going to make this exact website. You can get a meet the team button that takes you to a meet the team section, which can be on the home page or on a whole team page. You can always change the text color or the text font. And by the way, you don't need to have any technical experience to follow this tutorial. You don't need to know code like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Ajax, Python, PHP, MySQL, none of that. When you use Sydney, your site will be mobile friendly responsive from the start as well. And it's really important because when your visitors are on the go and they look at your site from their mobile device or tablet, they need to get your information fast. They need to get your phone number. They need to get your menu. They need to get your location and the time of your events and your services. And by using Sydney, you guarantee that your audience gets that. So go check out just-a-demo.com now from your mobile device of choice and go check out how we're going to make a mobile-friendly website in WordPress at the same time. You get a live counter, which could be the number of clients you've worked with. Let's refresh the page so that actually counts. And it'll do that every time someone visits your page. So this could be the number of days until an event the number of clients you've worked with, the number of people at your firm. You can get totally creative with this and every section. Whether you're a musician who needs to get more gigs, a freelance photographer who wants more clients, a restaurant who just opened up, a church who needs more members, a developer who just launched an app, or a small business who wants to get more exposure, or maybe just a total beginner who wants to learn about websites, I want to help you create a professional website. You get testimonials to build trust in your brand. These are just ones about my YouTube channel, but that's not all. You can make a portfolio section right here, which we called our work, and you can of course change these titles, and you can make as many different portfolio items as you want. I just made one row of them so they go across the whole page, and you can put the types of portfolios here for people to choose from. You get a data section because they say data is important several call to actions to get people to click on anything you want. You can embed videos, showcase client icons, you get a complete blog, and of course you get the basic social icons. So as you can see, this website is simple, easy to use, and just plain works. And this little button here will always take us to the top. The Sydney theme is currently the 12th most popular theme on WordPress. So here I am on WordPress.org site. Just clicking the themes button at the top and then clicking the popular tab. And we can see Sydney is sitting right here. It's made by an awesome, really cool company called A Themes. And when you get a chance, you should check out all the reviews on Sydney. So, Sydney is the 12th most popular theme, and WordPress is the number one most popular CMS or content management system on the web. Used by over 25% of the best websites, such as the New York Times, CNN, Forbes, Jay-Z, Katy Perry, the list goes on. If you use this tutorial, you'll know how to navigate the entire WordPress dashboard like a boss. And if your friend's been using WordPress and 
showing you all the cool things that they can do with WordPress. Don't worry, because you'll know how to use it even better than your friend when you're done here. This tutorial is also all drag and drop. If we click on the page that we're going to be working on mainly, the front page, we can see that all the content you saw on the main page of our demo is just drag and drop. We can put the portfolio here and the testimonials there, or put things in the same place, or just put them wherever we want. And when you're editing, it's just going to be a bunch of writing in text like Microsoft Word and copy and paste. But of course, you'll feel more advanced than that with your own website. You'll also learn how to use HostGator to register a domain name and hosting and then install selfhostedwordpress.org without needing to know any coding or computer knowledge. HostGator, out of all the web hosts I tried, makes this the most easy and the most fun. And that's why I use them for all my tutorials, all my personal blogs, all my client websites, and so on. I like to think of them as the Google of web hosting, and they come with tons of free goodies to play around with after we've set up WordPress. At the end, I'm also including a bonus video explaining how to quote unquote do more, like install Google AdSense, analytics, set up more pages, and so on, so that you can be assured that you get the most out of your website. So if you want to build this website or you know a similar website with your own content in it, then I want to help you. And now I'll go into my formal tutorial voice. But first, I want to say that when you create with us, you are not alone. We have a massive, vibrant community of YouTube commenters helping each other out 24-7. And we now have a WordPress forum of our own where you can post questions 24-7. Just visit what well, won't come up if you search the, unfortunately, the WordPress experience or visit the WordPress experience .com and click forums. And here you can post any question you have as you make a website 24 seven and get help right away. You can just scroll down to the create a new topic section, enter in your question title and your question itself, and then click submit and we'll help you out right away. Okay. Whew, before I lose my voice, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do this. In order to make this complete website from scratch, we need to complete these five steps listed in our website checklist. So to make it easy, I'm going to explain to you what each of these steps means, a few tips for how I like to do each step, and perhaps most importantly, what each one of these steps costs us. If you went and hired a web developer in your town to build this exact website for you from scratch, they would charge you anywhere from $500 to $5,000 but we're gonna do it for much cheaper. And if you don't believe me, go out and get a quote. I guarantee you'll be amazed. First thing we'll get is the domain name, which is also your website name or your brand name. If you're gonna start a brand called Google, you wanna register google.com. If you can't get the word or keyword that you wanna get, try putting another keyword right after it, like cookies. And then you'll most likely be able to get the .com. There's no negative penalty in terms of SEO for choosing the .net or .org. I've built successful websites with all of them. But keep in mind that the .com is the most recognizable. You want your website to be easily recognizable and for it to be a no-brainer for people to find it. If you still can't think of a good domain name, welcome to the club. You're like most of us. It's always a good idea to register your first name, last name, .com. That way, when someone looks you up, you can control exactly what they find. And it's actually pretty amazing for branding. A domain name costs us anywhere from $10 to $15 per year. That's the standard price we all pay. But I'm going to show you how to get your domain name at a discount for $5.99 a year. So that's pretty cool. The next thing is hosting. Hosting is like a plot of land where you're going to build your new amazing house or mansion. As such, it's really important that we register that plot of land somewhere secure where it won't get taken down and where we won't be limited at all as to what you can make. You could also think of hosting as a computer that's online at 24-7, 365 so people can see your content. Without hosting, people would go to your domain name and they would just see a blank page. The standard cost of web hosting is $10 a month, but I'm gonna show you how to get it 
for five dollars per month and hosting is the most expensive part of making a website once you have a domain name and hosting set up you can install wordpress.org onto them for free and i'm going to show you how to do that with just a couple clicks no coding or previous computer knowledge or experience required whatsoever and wordpress despite what you might have heard is free open source software once we've installed WordPress, we can install our new theme onto WordPress, just like we would put on a new jacket. We're, of course, going to put on the Sydney theme, and that, believe it or not, is free. I can't believe Sydney's not a premium theme for all the amazing features it offers us, but it's free. And with our new copy of Sydney installed, I'm going to show you how to get tons of content for free as well. We're going to get free high resolution amazing images of anything you can think of we're gonna set up videos buttons links pages forms and more all for free it's gonna be a lot of fun that brings our total bill today for making our website to under twenty dollars For me, that's like one time out of the year, I don't take a friend to lunch and instead make a sandwich from the fridge instead. It's really amazing how you can have a profitable website instead of this or that for such a small amount of money. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Go ahead and grab yourself a drink and get comfortable and let's begin. Fortunately for us, we can tackle steps one, two, and three at the same place, which is HostGator.com. In the olden days, it used to be really difficult to connect these three things and to set up self-hosted WordPress like we're going to do right now, but HostGator has made it really easy. So just open up your Google, there's my Google, and in the top bar, just type in H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R dot com, hope I spelled it right, there we go, and click enter to get started. And remember, this is all really easy and hopefully fun. So HostGator has a lot of awesome products like cloud hosting, WordPress hosting, VPS hosting, dedicated, and so on. But what we want to click is just web hosting at the top. And once you click that, you want to focus on the hatchling plan and the baby plan. These are by far the most chosen plans for people that are making their first website. It's the path that's most traveled, and that's what we want to do right now because it means that we're getting set up the right way. So I want you to focus on Hatchling right here and Baby right here, and also focus on the discounts below them. Right now for me it says 43% off and 40% off on Hatchling and Baby. We're also not going to get business um, because it's just more money and it's more features that we don't need right now. Don't worry about this little we recommend sign. So I want to show you a trick now to get a better discount than these numbers off we're seeing right here in the dark blue area. Come up to your top bar again and right after HostGator, just delete whatever it says right there. Delete and just type in my name. Just type in Greg and hit enter. And what this will do is take you to a special landing page. You'll see the bonus so you know you're in the right place and it's going to show an increased discount because I was once like you making my first website and I want to show you how to get the biggest possible discount at HostGator which we have right here and now the we recommend sign is in the right place because I recommend the hatchling plan there are of course other hosts on the web that will help you set up domain hosting and WordPress if you're not sure about HostGator but I will say that I've tried out a bunch of other hosts and I've had some bad experiences. If you don't know for sure that your host has things like the unmetered disk space and bandwidth so they don't limit you on how much you can make and the year-round technical support, the money-back guarantee, if your host doesn't have that stuff guaranteed then you might very well run into problems. Um, so I just wanted to say that you know I want you to make sure that you have those things locked in place and we certainly know that HostGator does, so it's a really good bet. I, of course, use HostGator for all my websites. It's totaling almost 100 domains and websites at this point. Which brings me to my point in choosing Hatchling or Baby Plan. If you want to run multiple websites, you choose the Baby Plan. If you want to just run one website and start one website, you choose the Hatchling. 
these two plans are exactly the same otherwise. But you can always upgrade from hatchling to baby later on. So in this demo, we're just gonna use the hatchling plan. It's like I said, the most common route by far. So let's click buy now. All right, now you're in the HostGator order form, you're in the right place, don't worry, and you're doing a great job. I'm gonna walk you through all six steps here in the order form so that you can register your hosting flawlessly and get on your way making your WordPress website. All right, and we're also gonna get the best possible discount, of course, because that's important. All right, so in step one, choose a domain. Either register a new domain or click I already own this domain and write in your domain name from GoDaddy or somewhere else and then proceed and complete your hosting order, after which I'll show you how to connect the hosting to the domain name. All right, that's what you do if you already own a domain name you wanna use. But in our case, I wanna register a new domain name. And because I couldn't really think of something clever like Google or Facebook or Twitter right now, I'm just gonna go with my name.com, gregnerion.com. And when I was searching on HostGator earlier, I realized that that was actually available and it wasn't when I checked about a month ago. So, got kind of lucky, it's a good time to do this, and I obviously wanna get through this process quickly so that no one else can steal my name. All right, but remember what I said about the keywords, if you can't get your name or the word you want, just write in one additional keyword after it, and you'll likely be able to find that as available. All right, and go for the .com. Once you have your domain name entered perfectly, we're just gonna choose one of them and come down and uncheck domain privacy protection. I don't think we need that right now, but we can add it later if you want. In step two, it's time to choose a hosting plan. So we know that we want Hatchling, that's great. And then for billing cycle, I'm just gonna change it from 36 months to one month, just cause I don't like getting locked in and uh, yeah but I know that a lot of people like choosing 12 months or something like that. When I made my first order at HostGator like five or six years ago, I think I chose 12 months too, and it worked out great. So next we wanna enter in a username. All lowercase, start with the letter, two to 12 characters long. Just go with something that you like using, and this'll be what you use to log into HostGator. So make it something you like. Then we need a security pin, four to eight characters long with only numbers. So why not something simple? Because we'll need this if we ever, for whatever reason, get locked out of our hosting account. Which won't happen, but just write those two things down so we're safe. In step three, enter your billing info. I'm gonna do this all really quickly now so we can get on with it and that no one can steal my credit card info. All right, and you could also pay with PayPal if that's more convenient, but we're gonna pay with credit card, and I hope you don't take offense that I blanked out that information. One time I just went through with a tutorial with all the credit card information out there, and then I woke up to like 50 emails from YouTubers saying that they you know, saw my credit card info, and I'm not using that card anymore, but you guys are all really nice people. I appreciate it. In step four, we're just gonna uncheck additional services. Um, if you want more info, feel free to ask in the comments, um, you know, or about anything, but I just don't think we need to spend money on all this now. It doesn't really fit our budget, but you could later on if you want. And in step five, enter a coupon code. All right, so this part's important. Make sure you already have big bonus entered right here and click validate. All right, and we can see it already validated, but of course clicking again doesn't hurt. This just makes sure that you get the largest possible discount at HostGator and save the most money. It's really important that you save money so you can use it on other aspects of making your website, launching your business, making your blog, promotion, email, stuff like that I want you to have money for. So again, this coupon code big bonus is the best and biggest HostGator coupon code available. I obviously want the best for my audience. If you use this coupon, as well as my custom landing page link to sign up to HostGator, I earn a small credit for referring you to their services, which doesn't come at any additional cost to you, and it's really cool because that helps me keep making these videos for everyone, 
and keep helping you out for free on YouTube and everywhere else on the web where we use WordPress. Um, you know, some people put ads on their videos. I don't like doing that. I'd rather search for the best discounts for you guys and do it that way. So I really appreciate you helping me um, do what I love doing, and I hope to help you do the same thing with your new website. All right, with all that said, it's time to come down and review order details in step six. We get the 24-7, 365 phone live chat email support for free. Instant account activation, which will happen once we click checkout now, is free. Money back guarantee for 45 days. Domain registration for one year. We got it down from $15 to $5.99, as we said. Hatchling plan of one month, got it down from $10, $10.95 to $5.47, which is great. And then these two green numbers here, where my mouse is, combined to make this red amount due total. The green discount is the difference between these two numbers and these two numbers. And the black subtotal is just the 15 plus the 1095. All right, so it's a little confusing that the discount is green, but just keep your eyes on the 1146 here on my screen. If it says that on your screen, you're good to go. And if it's a few cents lower or higher, then you're good to go as well. Let me know any questions. All right, and then come on down. And once you're feeling good to go, I know I'm feeling good to go. Check this box. It says you've read their terms of service and so on. And now it's time to click check out now, finally. Congratulations and welcome to the HostGator family. When you see this screen, it's now time to check our inboxes. And we can come play around in the HostGator customer portal later on. So in a minute or so, as we just saw, HostGator will send you an email. And the important one is called HostGator.com, your account info. So let's open up that email. All right, and we're going to use the information in this email to log into HostGator, where we'll install WordPress in just a second. At the moment, let's open up our checklist, and we can cross off step one and step two. Those are now completed, so pat yourself on the back. There's an in-between step we need to complete right now, though, before we can install WordPress. And that in-between step is to make sure our domain name is connected to our hosting perfectly. So if you purchased your domain name from somewhere like GoDaddy, for example, head there right now, click on the section where it says Manage My Domains, find your domain, and enter in the first name server and the second name server. Just replace whatever it says already with these two name servers and then make sure to save. If you purchase your domain name from HostGator for $5.99 and you're making this website from scratch like I'm doing here, then you can try to visit your domain name. In our case, it's just gregnerion.com and we're gonna get this page right here, which means we need to enter in the first name server and the second name server at HostGator. And if you don't see this page, if you see a white screen or some other confirmation page at HostGator, Drop me a note about it in the comments below and I'll tell you exactly what to do. All right, so what we wanna do is leave this screen as it is right here, come back to our inbox, and now just click on the billing email from HostGator. And once you click that, we're gonna see billing portal link, login name, email address, and password. And what we wanna do is copy this password. I'm just gonna highlight and copy it. I'm gonna remember our login email address. And we want to click on the link that says portal.hostgator.com. All right, now let's log in with our email. Paste the password from Hostgator and click login. Great job. All right, now in the upper tabs, click domains. And you'll see the domain name you registered at HostGator right here under My Domains. So now click on the gear. 
it's going to open up this window right here. And now where it says name servers, we can see there's the default HostGator name servers and we need to change these. So click on change. All right, and sorry, this is a little extra work. I really do apologize. We're almost done. And then we can do the fun stuff. All right, so now back in our email, go back to the inbox and open up the your account info email once again and just copy in your first name server and your second name server. All right, so if you can remember that, then you have a great visual memory. 8498. All right, so I'm just going to paste that in over name server one, our new name server one, and name server two. We'll copy paste it so we know we get it right. Paste that over name server two. Now we're looking good, so let's save name servers. And it's going to take a moment and then confirm our new name servers for us. And that will connect our new HostGator domain name with our new HostGator web hosting. And if it makes you feel good, you can click save again. I know it makes me feel good. All right, let's close this gear section and let's close this window. And let's refresh our domain and see if anything happens. And we're all set. So now HostGator is telling us we're ready to start building and in the next step, we're going to visit the C panel where we'll install WordPress. Really great job, guys. All right, guys. So now we're going to log into the HostGator C panel where we're going to install WordPress without any coding knowledge or anything like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We are officially on step three now, WordPress.org. All right. So let's do it. We need to visit our email because we need the password here and the username now, which will get us into control panel or C panel for short. And we need to click on this link right here. It's the same as clicking on this link, C panel login, um, which is on your domain name, but I like going with the link in the email. So let's copy the password right here. Copy that. And we can remember the username. That's pretty easy and click the link for your control panel. All right, now let's log in there. Paste the password, click login, and welcome to control panel. All right, so this is the place where everyone installs WordPress. HostGator created it for us a while ago, and they've been updating it and making it beautiful. As we can see here, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, but the good news is that other web hosts are catching up, and they're you know, starting to look like this, too. I just say that because I want you to know we're in the right place and we're doing this the right way. It's kind of funny if you watch my older videos, the C panel looks different than this. It just looks more old fashioned, um, but now it looks really modern and amazing. And this is of course how I like to install WordPress every time. All right, there's a lot of free tools to play around with here. Like you can get your AdWords credit here. You can add more domains here. There's the AdWords credit and so on and so forth. But for now, what you want to click is just WordPress installer. All right, so once you click that, it's going to let you know that we're installing WordPress and tell you the latest version right here. We want to select your domain. All right, so we'll select gregnerine.com or whatever domain name you're registering. Leave the directory box blank and click Next. All right, now let's write in our blog title right here, which we can change later once we're inside WordPress. But I'm just going to call it, you know, Greg Narayan because that's our domain name. That should be the blog title and the name of the website too. Enter in the admin user, which you'll use to log into WordPress, and some other basic information like your first and last name. And make sure you get your admin email right because WordPress is going to send important information to that email. All right, once you've done this, just click this box to accept the terms of service agreement and you're all set. You can now click install now. All right, so WordPress was just installing there and HostGator did all the complicated technology stuff for us and it says installation is complete. So great job. Now is a really good time to take a break and that's because with the domain name step we did with the name servers and with this HostGator uh, install WordPress step, 
it can take from two to four hours for WordPress to start working and to get to the point where we can log into WordPress. It might take even longer if you register your domain name from GoDaddy, for example, that can take anywhere from four hours to up to 72 hours, but hopefully less. So I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna go outside and get some fresh air, get a snack, and I'm gonna come back in two to four hours and then we're gonna log into WordPress and create a WordPress website with the Sydney theme. All right, so I'll see you then. All right, hello again. I'm back from my break, which also included nine holes of golf at the local golf course. So I hope you had a good break too. And we can see we have our installation details here installed to our domain name, WordPress was, username and a password. And to try and log in for our first time, we can click on My Installs right in this Marketplace window. Then to test if your WordPress website is working yet, just click the Admin Login link. And if you get this login screen, it means you're good to go. Your WordPress site is 100% working. If you don't get this login screen, then you know let me know in the comments. If you have any issues installing, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you just want to tell me what you did on your break, let me know in the comments too. So we're going to log in in a moment on that screen. Of course, you can open it and close it as many times as you want. It'll still be there. But before we log in, we need to reset password. All right, so click Reset Password, select User, Ourselves, and then write in a new password that you'll remember. And this will replace the crazy numbers and letters password that the Marketplace created for us. Click Update Password. We can click it one more time to make sure it worked, and we're good to go. So let's click the Admin Login link again, and at the same time, I'm also going to close our other windows like our welcome message, our inbox, and our marketplace, and this uh, cPanel window. And then we can just focus on WordPress. And let's log in for our very first time. And let's also click Remember Me and bookmark this login screen because you're going to want to come back through this screen every time you log in and edit your new website. I'm going to put that in my Blogger Help folder and click Login. All right, very warm welcome to WordPress. We can open up our website checklist and cross off WordPress.org, which we've now installed onto your very own domain name and hosting. So step three is complete. Great job. And now we can go through a little tour of the WordPress dashboard and of your WordPress website. If anything looks a little bit different on my screen than on yours, there's a slight, very small chance you're using an older version of the uh, cPanel or of the WordPress software. Um, but don't worry, the path to success is the same. And like I said, you can always let me know any issues in the comments below. So the first thing we want to do is click I don't need help because we're going to do it together. And now you're going to get the normal WordPress dashboard. If we click on our site title, which is our name in the upper left, and also shows a home icon, click that, it'll take you to the home page of your website as the world will see it. And if you click back on the site title, which is now a dashboard icon, it'll go to the dashboard. We can see how that icon changes back and forth. The rest of the world won't see this area. They won't see things like settings, plugins, appearance, they won't see this gray or the white area because this is your private dashboard where you make the website and where you make edits. What the world will see is whatever we put up on the front end of your website, which is the home page, the about page, the contact page, and all of that. And to get to the front end, we can just click back on the button in the upper left. All right, so this is the front end of your website right now. There's just one thing. We gotta go back to the dashboard and we want to get rid of the coming soon page because actually on new WordPress copies it shows a coming soon page at first. Um, so if I open our site in a new browser tab where we're not logged in and visit the domain name, it's going to show this website coming soon page right when you first do this and you first set up WordPress. Some people like keeping this up. I personally don't because if you you know text your friend hey, check out my new website, what do you think of this feature, and they're not logged in, 
they're going to see this screen. And you know, it doesn't really represent our brand at all. I'm going to close that window. So to get rid of that coming soon page, just click here, click that link. And now the entire world will see the website like this. All right. And as you build things, they'll see it too, which just means that we should hurry up a little bit. In other words, your website is now live. I know that sounds a little bit scary, but we're going to change everything here and make it look great. And from my experience, people actually really like seeing a website come together. It makes them feel like a part of something great. So let's start changing everything and let's install our new theme. At the moment, the theme that this site is running is 2016. You might have 2017 or 2018. And the theme just refers to the black borders, the fonts, the way this Hello World blog post is positioned right here and the sidebar is over here. The way everything looks is the theme. To change your theme, click in the upper left to go back to the dashboard. Let's also clean up our site a little bit. Just click no thanks on the little reminders and on this offer for help. And now let's hover on appearance and click themes. We can see our active theme on the upper left theme card right here. And we can also see the other themes that our website came with by these other theme cards right here. We can open up the active theme and see that it's made by the WordPress team. 2016 was a really beautiful, great theme. And it did a lot of good things for us WordPressers in the WordPress community. But we don't just want good, we want something great. And sometimes even great isn't good enough. And we just want powerful, downright powerful. So let's add a new theme by clicking this add new button on the right. And we'll be taken to this section with all the free themes you could try out in WordPress, the featured themes, the popular themes you can check out and so on. And to get our theme of choice, which of course is Sydney, just do a search on the right for Sydney. And it'll automatically search without even clicking enter. This is the theme we want. We can click details and preview. And you can open it up. Make sure it's by a themes, not some other Sydney theme. This is the one we want. And we can click install. And what will happen is your copy of WordPress will install the Sydney theme right from the WordPress directory. Because we're connected to the internet, we're basically connected to all of WordPress. And now this button changes to activate. Click activate. All right, so now the little prompt says new theme activated. Why don't we visit site? So just click this link. And it'll take us to our new website that's got a total makeover. And right away, it looks different. So we can see that just by knowing a really great, powerful theme to install, we can change the entire look of our website. And it's already starting to look quite professional. Congratulations. Welcome to Sydney. You've successfully installed the new theme for today. So we can open up our checklist and cross off step four. Install the Sydney theme is complete. All right, and now let's go back and let's learn how to build a website with Sydney. Click back to the dashboard in the upper left. And the first step to build a website with Sydney is to install the plugins that this theme recommends. All right, which is just two really powerful plugins. So we're going to do that in a moment. But first, I want to take you to the plugin section of WordPress and show you what's already going on there on your new WordPress. So when you click plugins, you'll be taken to the plugin section. And we see that our WordPress site came with some, well, some plugins. That's all they are. They extend the functionality of WordPress and help us do more. And there's always a little description of what a plugin does. But because we didn't choose to install these plugins, I'm going to delete all of them. I want to do that to give everyone a clean start on a clean slate and make sure we're all on the same page. So what we need to do is click this upper plugin box to select all the plugins and then from the bulk actions, select deactivate and click apply. All right, now do that one more time, select all, bulk actions, delete, click apply. And then it's going to say, are you sure? And click OK. By the way, deleting plugins has no negative effect on your site and you can always reinstall them for free 
if you want them later on in the future without any negative effect on your site. All right, so let's click this plugins button again to refresh this section. We successfully deleted the plugins and we don't have any. So now where it says this theme recommends the following plugins, click begin installing plugins. We actually want these plugins. So now select all, from bulk actions choose install and apply. All right, and just like our theme was installed through WordPress, uh, our plugins are being installed right through WordPress and through the Wi-Fi right now. And so the installations have been completed successfully. Let's return to the required installer. And to use these plugins, we need to activate and activate. Great job. Now when we click the plugins tab, we'll have two active plugins. And you can tell they're active because they have the light blue background. All right, so now that we have our two amazing plugins, Page Builder by Site Origin, which we've used in many, many past tutorials of mine, and Sydney Toolbox, which I can't wait to use today and to show you how to use. And now that we've installed our copy of Sydney, which we can see in appearance is active and gives us all these powerful sections that other websites don't have, like service, employees, testimonials, clients, and projects, just for installing the theme. Now that we have all this stuff, why don't we start building and let's create an amazing website together. The first thing I like to do whenever I build a new site, whatever the website is, is just to add pages. All right, and I'll try to build this in a normal web design flow so that you can get comfortable with every area in WordPress and build a website just like a professional web designer would build a website. All right, so just follow me to the pages section and click pages in the left. We can see we have a sample page and we can just trash that. All right, we don't want to show the sample page, even though it's nice that WordPress came with it. Now we just need to click add new in the top. And the first new page that any WordPress website needs is just called front page. So right in front page at the top, and what the front page is gonna be is actually our home page. It might sound weird, we already have a home page of the site, but in fact, our home page is just showing some default content. We wanna actually create a home page so that we can decide exactly what goes on our home page. And in WordPress, it's just called front page. So once you title it front page, then on the right in page attributes template, just change it from default template to front page. See, I didn't make that stuff up. We want this to be our front page. You don't even need to put anything in this white area, just click publish. All right, so now we've made a front page. It's pretty cool. And I wanna set up this page as the home page of our site. If we click to the home page now by clicking in the upper left, we see that we have this awesome slider, but down below we have blog posts and we have a sidebar on the right. And in WordPress, the default setting is to show the blog post on the homepage because maybe you wanted to make a blog and maybe you wanted a sidebar, but we don't want that. We want our own custom homepage. And now that we've made a front page, we need to make that front page what this page shows. All right, so just follow me back to dashboard. I know it's a little bit confusing, but just bear with me. We're gonna do all this together. And now come down to settings, click on settings. These are your WordPress settings. And now click on reading. So we can see by default, the front page of our site is the latest posts. In other words, the home page displays the latest posts like we just saw. But we wanna select a static page for front page displays. And then for front page, just choose front page. All right, so you're probably sick of seeing those words front page now, but all you need to know is to set it up like this, put in front page right there, and save changes. And now let's click and see what the site shows right now. So we click back. And now we can see we got rid of the blog post, we got rid of the sidebar, because our home page is now the front page, which is empty. All right, so let's look at a few more examples of creating pages. We could go back to the dashboard and click pages again, 
or we can just hover on the new drop down in our upper nav this little skinny nav at the top and then we can select new page alright so why don't we make all the pages our website needs right now and just get that part over with so let's call one page about us and now we can just publish it and we can click add new again and you know every website needs a contact us page too so let's set up that page and when you set up a page you also get a permalink which is the URL or just the link for short um, you know in plain English every page needs a link and WordPress creates that link for us right here and it puts the words we choose in the title bar right in the link right there and you can also edit that and remove words if you want it to be simple in general Google likes simple but a couple words like contact us is just fine click OK and let's publish the contact page add new again and our website also needs a blog page where we show off all our blog posts and build our audience using the blog publish add new again so what we're doing is basically creating placeholder pages where we're gonna drop in our content a little bit later on in the tutorial and we want an our work page publish add new and because we're making a professional website that could be a business website for any sort of business you're running we're also going to create a services page where you can highlight your best services and click publish alright so once you do that click over to the website and let's see if anything looks different and it doesn't alright so what we need to do is put those pages in a menu in the upper right to create our first menu that people can use to navigate the different pages on your website click create your menu here and you can also get to this section through appearance menus if you'd like oftentimes there's a couple ways to get to the same section in WordPress you know they like those redundancies just to make it a little bit easier for you to find your way around so what we have here is like a default menu of WordPress guessing what we might want but it's really cluttered so we're gonna create a new menu click that create a new menu link and give our menu a name like main menu is always good and create menu you can call it something like primary menu or main menu but I like main menu and then in the pages section on the left make sure it's open by clicking the arrow and click select all and then deselect any pages you don't want but we want all of these and we can click add to menu and WordPress will automatically create a menu for us. Alright, we just need to choose where this menu goes in theme locations. Primary menu is our only option, which is great. And click Save Menu. And now when we go to the site, we can see that we've created our first menu. But I want to rearrange the menu items. We can also get to menus by hovering on our dashboard button and clicking Menus. And then we can rearrange our menu just by clicking and holding on these tabs and dragging them. And so we want front page, then about us, followed by contact us, followed by services, then our work and blog at the end. And we can also retitle these by opening them up and changing the navigation label. So that was pretty easy. We're going to make this one called Home, just standard. Close it, save menu, check out the site. You can also click Visit Site if you'd rather do that, but these buttons go to the same thing. And we now have a perfect looking custom menu. Great job. Now I want to do a quick step to make our website more Google friendly. If we click on one of the sub pages, like About Us, we can see that in the link to this page, there's an index.php in between the domain name and the keywords. We want to get rid of that index.php because Google likes simple links. So to do this, click back to the dashboard and we're going to reset our permalinks. Just go to settings, permalinks, and instead of whatever it says selected for you, just choose post name, which is the simplest option and the one that contains the keywords and then click Save Changes. 
And that's all I really need to know about permalinks for the moment. Now our links have a lot more simple structure. Great job. Now I want to shift focus and make our WordPress website with Sydney come to life by designing the home page. That's where this theme really stands out by showing your audience one amazing feature after the next as they scroll down further on the home page. It's what gives your website or your business or your brand the feeling of being a wealth of knowledge and we obviously want that. I want to introduce you to a website called justademo.com where a lot of my demo websites have lived in the past and where Sydney's demo lives right now. Just visit just-a-demo.com to find this site, which we're going to be using a ton throughout the tutorial. I've spent several months designing this entire site, and let's just click around it right now to get to know it. This website basically talks about my services and what I teach you in WordPress, but it's designed to represent any business you can think of whether you're a real estate firm, a hotel firm, whether you're fashion, finance, a blogger, just wanting to create a freelance website or portfolio, this website has all the features you can need and more. Everything you see here, whether it's the stats counter or the review section or the homepage video or the client icons, you can find below the YouTube video. Just click show more and then you can find the link to create that particular section so you can skip around. The idea is that you can make as much of this stuff as you want or just make selective features that you think are going to be useful for your brand's website. We can click on this little arrow to get to the top and we can see that we have some nice big images for the slider as well. So almost all of the features you see on justademo.com exist already in your copy of Sydney. They're already here, you just have to make them and set them up. Anything that your website doesn't contain already, like the image of the iPhone and these HD images for the slider, I'll show you how to get for free around the internet in the right places. And of course I always keep my demo sites live for a long long time so that as you build your website you can visit justademo.com and put it up alongside the website just like we're doing here alongside the website we're going to make and that way you have a demo live and you know it's possible to make what you want to make the path is already there for you it's literally going to be as easy as copying the text from this uh, demo website and then pasting into our site and of course getting the little things like the images and the buttons and everything from what Sydney provides us and from free resources on the internet Alright, so this demo site is here for you, let's do it, and if for whatever reason you visit justademo.com and you see a different website, that means I had to take it down for some reason, and uh, I'll make sure to put a link to all the images and the text we use in the notes below the video, alright, if whatever reason that has to happen. But there's no better time to start building than now. Alright, let's hop back over to the site we're going to make. And the first section I want to create is right below the image slider, just so we have a little bit of wiggle room and can scroll up and down. And that would be the section that says, our websites are always blah, 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 blah. This section talks about the services your website offers. And we're going to see how to create these icons, the buttons, the text, and so on. All right, so enough talking. Let's just do it. Come back to our websites, and here we are on the front page. Remember that we created our home page is our front page. And because it's a page, we just want to click Edit Page at the top. All right, here we are on our front pages. And now the first thing we need to do is on the right-hand tabs where it says Visual, Text, and Page Builder, we want to click Page Builder. All right, so in older WordPress, it was just the visual and the text, but because we're doing this modern and professionally, there's Page Builder now, and we're gonna use Page Builder a lot. Once you're on this screen, you just need to either add a widget or a row. A widget goes inside of a row, so the best thing I think to do is just to click Row, or you can click Add Row right here, which will do the same thing. A widget is something that goes inside of a row, so I usually like to add a row first and then put widgets inside of it. All right, And the best way to do that is just to click 
add row. This button right here where my little Super Mario hand is. Alright, and that'll open up this window where we can choose the layout of the row. The nice thing about Page Builder is it's all drag and drop and we can easily separate a page into different areas so our content can easily be put in the right location. All right, and for this row, we just want one column. You can also set the ratio, so it's like offset on this side or offset on this side and left to right, but we're not gonna mess with the ratio today. We're just gonna set row layouts of different amounts of columns, one for now. And then click Insert. Once you do that, you can click on the row to highlight it and that means it's ready to have a widget inserted in it. So just click Add Widget. Great job. And what we're going to do now is choose from one of the widgets that Sydney provides us. And we can see that Sydney is working with Page Builder from Site Origin here. So this is originally made by Page Builder by Site Origin. Great company. You should check them out. Love them. And Sydney has gone ahead and added these different uh, widgets for us. So it's kind of like a match made in heaven. The first widget we want to choose is the services type A. All right, and don't worry too much about the names. It'll make sense as we add more and more of them and as we use all of them, or just about all of them. So click on services type A. Great stuff. It'll immediately come into our row like we see right now. We have one row with one widget. All right, good job. Let's click update on this page. And now I'm going to right click on our dashboard button so we can open the site in a new tab. There we go. And we can see we've added some white space beneath our image slider now, but it's just blank because the widget we added, the services widget, is blank. All right, so this is services sitting right here. There are just no services yet. So why don't we add some? All right. Let's go back to the dashboard and keep this window open so we can always check out our site. And now the right place to go seems like services. So let's click on the services tab. And now let's click add new service. All right, so this is going to look a lot like a new page editor. This is just how WordPress adds content to the site. It's usually a screen that looks something like this with the title, the content, and then the other settings that we need. And I'll walk you through all of it. All right, our first service is just called Simple to Build. And what we're doing is using the services as a way to show off what our brand does. So you can either write in your exact services in this section, like for example, if you're a fitness blog, you could write in things like cardio and weight training and you know diet consultation. Or you can use this section you know, a little bit more cleverly and just talk about your brand. And that's what we're doing. We're talking about our brand. So just write in a title, in our case it's simple to build, because on the demo site we have simple to build. And then what I'm going to do is just copy the dummy text all right, from our demo site at just-a-demo.com, copy that, and then come back and paste that into this white area. This is just our text area, which is either a visual tab like Microsoft Word or the text tab. And we're just going to leave this text as is right now because it's just there to show what your text could look like. Once you've done this, we're going to create a category for this service. Just click Add New Category. And I'm just going to write in the letter capital A, because these are services type A. Click Add New Category, and I'll show you where to use that category in just a moment. The next thing our service needs is a service icon. So if we come down to service info, we can see that we need to insert a service icon. There's an example, which is FA-Android, but what does that mean? Well, to see what that means, we click here, and we can see this opens up fontawesome.io, another amazing resource we're going to take advantage of, just one of the many. And we can see we have this huge arsenal of icons. You can literally put any icon you see on this list onto the website that we're making, and probably a lot more too, but I think this is a good start. The icon I want 
is what looks like this little stack of pancakes and it's called FA database. So what we need to do is just copy the FA dash and then the keyword then come back to our site and paste that in this bar right here that we see. And once you've done that, we can publish the service. Click publish. Great job. Now if we look at our site, let's refresh it. Come down, we see we've added our first service. Pretty cool. So let's add some more services. Come back to the dashboard, click add new service. And to make it easy, I'm going to add the rest of the content from our demo website. So this one involves the text, of course, and the title is easy to use, which is another feature of all the websites that we make. Paste the text in this white area again. Doesn't matter if you paste it in the visual or the text tab because it's just text. Although if you copy paste in text from Microsoft Word or from a document like that, you always want to paste it in text because if you paste it in visual, it's going to inherit some unnecessary formatting. Next, choose the category A and come down and choose your icon. We can use the font awesome list, of course. Now let's scroll up and I want the FA check square O, but of course you can choose whatever icon you want for your brand and your services. Once again, just copy paste that in with the FA and then all the keywords and publish. And let's add one more service. And this one is going to be just plain amazing. Just plain amazing. All right. Once again, we need the text. All right. So this is a little bit tedious, but of course it would take longer for me to write out my own custom copy right here. And we want to let you do that on your own time, you know, when you're feeling creative. All right, choose the category A, and then we need an icon. So in this case, I want the icons of people commenting, commenting could be a word, FA-comments-O and that will you know look like people are already talking about our brand paste it in there and publish all right and now when we refresh the site we can see we have our first three services looking really good everyone great job to give this section a title let's navigate away from the services back to pages front page which is the home page we're editing now we need to click on this widget itself to open it up and we need to enter in a title so this could say like our services or you know who we are or something but I'm gonna write in our websites are always great job now let's click done and update and refresh the site and we see that we've created our first little feature title. Great job. The next thing we need is the second set of services beneath the Our Websites Are Always section. And that way people will really get to know what our brand is all about. So how do we create this second list? Well, we go back to the dashboard and we need to add another row. Click Add Row. Make that one column and click Insert. So this is our second section on our home page. So in our second section, we want to add a widget, put some content in, and we want to select services type B right here. Great job. Now all we need to do is click update. And now what we need to do is go back to services and add three more services. So click add new. And these are going to be real services that I provide you. All right, so they're in the what do we provide you section. And I'm just going to copy them. I'm going to start by copying the bottom most section because as we add more services, they push them down. So let's copy the text and then paste it in. And this one's called mobile friendly design because everything we make is mobile friendly. Now we need a new category and let's just call this one capital B. There we go, add new category. And of course we need an icon. 
Let's go back to our font awesome list and let's get the cell phone. If you ever want to find a specific icon, you can always hit Control or Command F and look up a keyword. In our case, like phones would bring up some good icons. Or in the case of what we're doing now, just mobile. And you get the right icon we want, which is FA-mobile. So let's copy that. I'm just hitting Command Copy. Come back to the site and I'm going to hit Command V and paste that in there. And now publish. And now add new service and we want beautiful website and blog. So let's copy the text from just a demo. Come back and paste it in and write in beautiful website and blog. And of course you can write in whatever services you want. You know, you can really help people get to know your brand right here. This is the part of your website where you want to take advantage of something people think is boring like text and really show them it's not boring and tell them what your brand is all about. All right, so make sure to select category B and then we need our icon. Let's use our list. Scroll up to the top and I want FA bar chart O. Oh. Command copy, paste that in and publish our fifth service. Add one more new service and this one is going to be testimonial, stats, video portfolio and hundreds of other features which I provide you. Alright and then paste it in there and the title is pretty long so we just want to copy it and paste in our new service title. Choose the category B and we need one more icon which is just that suit and tie because we make professional websites for business people. All right, let's see if we can look up tie. And there is the FA black tie. So you can see in this huge list of icons, it can be really useful to use Command or Control F to find the icon. All right, Command Paste and Publish. So now let's refresh our site. And we can see that we have like all these services. We have six services in each section, but we've only created six total, not 12. And what's happening is the website is showing off all of our services in the first section and all of our services in the second section. To only show the right three services here and the right three services here, we need to make use of those A and B categories. So let's navigate back to Pages, Front Page, and let's open up Services Type A, and where it says enter the slug for your category or leave empty to show all services, just write in a capital A and then click done. And same thing for services type B, write in a capital B in the slug bar at the bottom, click done and then update. And now when we refresh, WordPress will understand to show off the right services in each section. All right, so that's pretty cool. We still need a title for section B. So let's open up services type B and let's give it a title, which is what do we provide you? Question mark. And we can see it doesn't matter if this is lower or uppercase, it's gonna make it all caps. Click done and update. And refresh to get our second title. All right, so we're looking pretty cool. To add our first button to the first section, which will take us to the second section when we click it, we need to make use of what are called anchor links. And all right, let's do it. Let's set up our first button. So let's come back to edit page and let's open up services type A where we want the button to be. And we can see there's already a section for the URL for your button and the text for your button. So we want the text for our button to be our services. Just our services, you know, it doesn't matter lower or uppercase, it's going to capitalize it and look great. That's the text on the button. And the URL is a little bit trickier. What we want is an anchor tag for the URL, and I'll show you exactly what to write. If we go to the Just a Demo site, and if we hover on the Our Services button, in the lower left corner, we can see the link that's on this button, and it says just-a-demo.com forward slash pound sign pg-47-1 
And what that means is it's going to take us to hashtag PG-47-1 when we click it, which is this section. So how do we know what to write? How do we know that it's PG-47-1? Well, it's definitely going to be pound sign PG. That's just the structure it uses. All right, And then it's definitely going to be a dash. But in order to know the right number to put in next, you need to look above this services type A section. Keep going up, keep going up, and look in the URL bar on the current page where you're editing the front page. So on my page, it says blah, 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 post equals seven. And whatever number it says for you on your screen, in my case, it's a seven, but in your case, it might be a one or a 42, whatever that is, just put that right here after the dash, seven. Great job. Then we need one more dash. And by the way, this is just the page ID of your front page, whatever this number is. It's a WordPress page ID. All right, and to figure out this next number for our URL, we just need to do a little bit of counting. Let's go back to just a demo, and let's do some counting. All right, so the way Sydney is built, there's the hero image slider, and then there's a primary section, which is whatever you make beneath the hero image slider. And then beneath that primary section, there's section one right here, which is what do we provide you? Section two, what's your next move? Section three, the founders. And these could be anything for you, but Whatever you put here, uh, Sydney will just denote by a number. So if I wanted this button here to take us down to like, you know, the R work section, I would just have to count down the sections. But because we want this button to just take us to what do we provide, it's just counting down one section from primary down to the first section. All right, so that means that the link can be finished off with the number one and click done and update. All right, now when we refresh our demo set, let's see if we have a button. And we do, our services is there. And now when we click it, it just takes us down to the first section beneath the primary section. All right, so how do we add that image next to the what do we provide you section? How do we put in this image we see on just a demo? Well, the first step is really easy. You can just download the image right from this website. Just right click on it and then click save image as. And it'll let you title it. So you can call it something like iPhone 5, I think this is. It's funny that I'm not even sure. And save it. Whatever, it's gold, it looks good. And then come back to our page editor. And what we want to do first is edit this row for services type B. All right, we wanna hover on the wrench and click edit row. And then we wanna set the row layout to two columns. So plus one there and click done. And that'll automatically put our services on the left. We can put it on the right, but we want it on the left. And then we wanna click in the right column, click add widget. And then to add an image, it's always good to just start with a site origin editor which is a rich text editor. So click that and click it to open it up. And it's gonna say you need to install the widgets bundle to use this widget. So let's do it. We're gonna do everything that this theme recommends we do and click activate. All right, so now we're on the plugins page, what the heck? But we just need to go back to the screen we were just on and we're gonna click done and update and that'll also refresh the page. It's really not a good idea to click the back button when you're building a WordPress page because that can remove some of your content. We'll close the plugins window. Now open up the site origin editor and in this screen we get the visual and the text editor. Doesn't matter which one we're in, we just need to click add media, click select files, and it's gonna search your computer so to find the right image, you might need to tell it to go to a different folder like documents or desktop or so on and so forth. In my case, the image is on the desktop and I'm just going to click open. Doing so will upload the image to your website and we're in fact uploading the very first image to WordPress. Great job. There's some display settings on the lower right we want to change. 
for size, choose full size to give ourselves the highest possible resolution, and then click insert into page. You can also make the image centered here by clicking alignment center. And if you want the image to be clickable, you can link it to something like a custom URL, and then you can set the link on this image, but we just want none. Now click insert into page, and we have our golden iPhone 5. Click done, and click update. And now when we refresh the site, we did two things. We moved the services to the left, and we added our first image. So that's pretty cool. All right, to set a background color on one of these sections, like the what do we provide you section, just come back to your page editor and edit the row. We can actually set a background color on widgets themselves, but we want to set it on the row so that it goes all the way across the whole page. Now click on design, and now click background color. And we're just going to go with a light gray. If we move the color wheel around, it'll let us pick the perfect color for our needs. You can really pick any color in the rainbow. But we just want a simple gray. Now click done once you have the right color and update. And let's refresh the site. We can see that we have a background, but for some reason it doesn't go all the way across the page. So why not? Well, that's because this row isn't full width yet. Let's go back to the page editor. To set a full width row and make the content go all the way across the page, come back to your page editor, hover on the wrench and click edit row, and now click on layout. And what we want to do is change the row layout from standard to either full width or full width stretch. I usually like full width, but full width stretch is sometimes necessary to really pull things across the page. Let's try full width. In this section, you can also add spacing above or beneath the uh, row itself, which is called padding or margin, And but we don't want to do that right now. And we're just going to click Done and Update and Refresh. And we can see that our gray background now spans across the whole page. All right, so it's starting to look like a real website. Now that we've got a few WordPress skills under our belts, we're going to up the difficulty and create this what's your next move section. The reason this is a little more difficult is because this section involves a background image along with two different boxes and two buttons on top of the image. It's just a little more building, but if you're up to it, I definitely think you can get it done. Alright, so the first thing we need is this widget itself. What widget is this? Well, it's called a layout builder. So let's go back to our page editor. And of course, we need a new row. And in the new row, we want it to be just one column, 100%. And click Insert. And sometimes it'll put the row in the wrong place. You just need to hover on the little arrows and drag and drop. So I'm just clicking to hold and drag until it gets positioned. Still clicking, holding, and then letting go to drop it in there. Now I click to select the widget, Add Widget. And we want the layout builder. All right, where is it? Layout builder. And there she is right here, layout builder. And what this lets us do, believe it or not, is create a row within a row. When we open up layout builder, we now have all the options for a row or widget. You can basically create infinite rows inside infinite rows, which we don't want to do. That's too crazy for now. We're just a little bit crazy. What we want to do now is make two more rows. All right, so it's you know a little bit crazy. You can click this row or you can click this add row. All right, and we're going to make a 50-50 row. So click insert. And then we want to add one more row, which is just the single column. And then click insert. All right, and let's drag our single column row to the top. Now let's start putting some widgets in here and start building it. The first widget we need is really simple. Just click on the top row to highlight it, and then add a widget, and just add a simple text. Click text. Now we can open text, and let's just write in a title, which is, what's your next move? So really simple, this is just the title of the section. Put the question mark in there, and we're good to click done. 
All right, so it's really not too hard, all right, guys? All right, now we want to select the lower left column and add a widget there. Add widget, and we want to add the call to action right here, this one, call to action. All right, and then it's in there. Now let's open the call to action up, and we see that this is just a simple text area with a button. Simple yet very powerful. All right, and because we're getting a little more advanced, I had to actually open up the Just a Demo website that I made about a month ago and then get the exact content from it so we can use it. The first part is just the call to action, which is just text. Copy, and then in this section, write in whatever text you want right above the button. Now we need some text for the button itself, which is called the title. And we want this button to say, meet the team, because when people click it, it's going to take them down to the team section, which shows the profile photos. For a link for the button, we're going to use the same structure as we did for our first button. We need the pound sign, PG, dash, whatever your page ID is in this upper top bar. In my case, it's a 7. So put in whatever your front page page ID is. Then put a dash. And then we're going to need the number of the section we want this to go to. In our case, it's section 3. The section we're making now with the Layout Builder widget is section 2, and one below it is section 3. All right, great job. Now this is getting even more advanced, and I want you to click on Attributes. And in this section, we're going to copy-paste in some CSS styles. All right, so I said you wouldn't have to write any code, and we really don't but we're going to copy paste in some CSS that I've written so that this section looks a little bit cooler. At this point I want you to open up the video notes below just click show more and where it says copy paste me click the link. In that file I'm going to give you all the content we can't simply write out together because it takes too long. Alright and what this is is a little bit of CSS that looks like this I can copy paste it because I have it written on my computer in the just a demo site, but you can't like copy paste it through my screen and that's why I'm giving you the copy paste me file. So just click that link, find the right section, which I'll label clearly. I'm going to make it really clear for you guys and just copy the section that looks like this. All right, and then come back to the layout builder and paste it in the CSS styles window, just like that. All right, and what this is going to do is give this particular section a slightly darker background shade. And click Done. Now what we want to do is make another similar call to action in the lower right column. Click to select it, click Add Widget, and click the call to action. Open it up, and we need some content. So I'm going to get that from just a demo. The first thing we can paste in is that CSS because we already have it copied. So let's paste in that same CSS for background color, RGBA, blah, blah, blah. Just one line like this, all right, which we copy pasted together. Now we're going to need the call to action. All right, so let's copy that from just a demo. Paste that in, and we're going to set up the title, which is the link text, and that's just going to say, get the facts. And we need a link for the button. Same structure as before, pound sign PG dash whatever your page ID is, mine's a 7 again, dash 4 for section 4. Now click done. All right, really amazing job. It's time to see what we made. So let's click done and let's update this page. And now when we refresh our demo site, we'll see some more content beneath the what do we provide you section, which is the layout builder itself. All right, we can see we're on the right track, but the spacing is way off. So how do we adjust the spacing in between the content in one of our sections? To do that, we need to adjust the margin and the padding within a section. So come back to the page editor, open up the particular section we're working on, which is the layout builder. Click in the middle to open it, 
And now to edit the spacing in between the rows, hover on the wrench and click Edit Row. Now click Layout, and we're going to set a top bottom padding to zero. By default, right here, it says that the padding is 100 pixels. And that's the white space we're seeing. That's why it's so much, because by default, this is 100. And when we set that to zero, that'll bring that content in closer together. Just put a zero in right here and click Done. And now let's do the same thing for the upper row. Edit Row, Layout, Top Bottom Padding of Zero, and click Done. Done. And at the same time, let's give our Layout Builder a little more padding itself. Let's click on this wrench. So we were clicking before on the wrenches within the Layout Builder. Now we're going to click on the wrench outside the Layout Builder. Click Layout, and let's just give ourselves the top bottom padding of 50, and just trust me that that'll look good. While we're here, we can do our technique we learned just a moment ago to make the row layout wider by selecting Row Layout Full Width, and click Done, and Update, and refresh the site. Alright, so now our layout builder is looking more like a real section on a real website. It's a lot cleaner. What we need to complete this section though is the background image. So to insert a background image on, well, behind a section, behind some content, you're going to need to do what we do right now. Come back to the page editor, and then there's a few places to put a background image. You just have to make sure you're putting it in the right place. In our case, because we want the background image to go behind this entire area, we want to put it as a background image on the entire row. So hover on the gear on this outermost row for the layout builder, click edit row, and now visit design. And where it says background image, we need to select image. But first we need an actual image. So let's get that free image that we used on just a demo, and that was the image of the sunglasses. To do so, what I did was I visited pixabay.com, that's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. This is where I like to get all my free high quality images. It's so amazing what you can find and just click on the different types of images and see what you find. It's a lot of fun. For now, just do a search for uh, sunglasses. And we're gonna get some options. So of course we need to narrow it down a little. How do we find the right sunglasses? Well, maybe we'll get lucky. Or maybe we can click a type of sunglasses that's close to what we want. And it's not going to give us the right related images, even though it's a pretty cool image in itself. All right, so I want to do a different sort of search. And I'm going to search for workspace. Click Enter. And there we go. I see it. I spy it. Here's the image we want. It's just part of a workspace with a computer and a notebook and some coffee. To actually get the image once you found the right one, let's click on free download. Let's choose the original size so it's large and high quality and let's click download. And I also recommend buying Pixabay a cup of coffee with a PayPal donation. All right, now let's go back to our page editor and let's click select image for background image, upload files, select files and let's upload our second image which has found its way to our downloads folder I'm going to double click sunglasses you can double click or hit open to upload the image and there it is once the image is uploaded just click done done again and now let's update and let's see what we made refresh the site And we can see we have a nice background image which shows up perfectly just the way we made it. To finish off our layout builder section, we just need to change the font colors. To change the font colors of this title and of these smaller titles, come back to our page editor and open up the layout builder so we can get at the text itself. Let's change the color of our simple text title. Just open it up and click design and then we want to change the widget title color. Click select color and click on just a simple red or whatever it is you like. Now click done 
Next, let's change the call to action colors. Open it up, click design, and for this section, we want to change the headings color. So select color, and if you know the exact hex color you want, you can actually just write it in on the right. You just need to write in six different digits, six different letters or numbers that match the color you want. In our case, we know this one. It's just a light gray. Click done. Open up the second call to action, design, headings color, and let's make that that same EA, EA, EA. Because it looks good, and click done, done, and update. Boy, that's a lot of work just to change a bunch of font colors. But now when we refresh, our layout builder section is done. This looks amazing. Did we really just make that together? Great job. So we might as well give the meet the team button somewhere to go and then give the get the facts button somewhere to go. Let's create the team section and after that, the facts section. To set up your team area, come back to the dashboard and now let's add another row. All right, let's make this just one column and click insert. And now we can drag it all the way to the bottom where it goes. Click once to highlight and now click add widget. And now we want the Sydney employees widget. So where is it? All right, there she is. Click it to insert. Now let's open up this widget. And all we need to change here is the title. I'm just gonna write in meet the founders. All right, and then done. And update. To actually have employees show up in the widget, we need to add them on the left in the Employees tab. So click Employees, and now click Add New Employee. And we're going to get this WordPress editor screen, which is becoming quite familiar. However, here we're going to start a little bit differently. We're going to start with a featured image, because we need a profile picture of one of our founders. Click Set Featured Image, and we need to get the image first onto our computer. So we're gonna go back to just a demo and come down and we're gonna copy paste in these three images. What you probably wanna do is position your team members in a pretty location next to a brick wall or some wood or out in the garden. Take some photos on your phone and then connect your phone to your computer. And then when you click upload, select files, assuming you've imported your photos, WordPress will be able to upload them right to your website. In our case, I'm just going to grab these three images I have on my desktop. Clicking enter to bulk upload. You can always select multiple images and then upload them at the same time, which is a really cool feature of WordPress in general. And what I'm going to do is just choose the first one of myself and click set featured image. All right, and then you need to enter in the name of the team member and you can put in some about text if you want, but I don't really want to, too lazy. And I'm gonna write in the employee position, which is video professional, and the Facebook. The Twitter, and so on. So you can put in a few social links to your team members or you can just leave them blank if you'd rather. And you can have the name of the employee linked to somewhere else, for example, if this person has an entire page devoted to them. All right, let's just try publishing. And right when we publish, let's refresh and we can see that that team member will come in right there. Sydney has this really awesome team feature where when you hover on the image, you get the option to choose the social links and when you click the links it'll take people to whatever social media pages that team number wants all right so that's really cool in sydney everything looks really clean and amazing and if you have more than three team members you'll be able to set up a scrolling feature right here on the home page all within sydney for now we need our second team member so let's add a new employee i keep calling them team members but i guess they're technically called employees Let's go with the same process, set featured image, choose Michelle, set featured image, enter in the name and Michelle's position is creative director, 
All right, I had to search to find that one. And we can write in her social links if we want, but I'm just gonna leave this blank. And publish. All right, add one more new employee. And this is gonna be Leroy and Snowy, AKA Snowball. All right, just the two kittens that help me make websites. And now we're gonna write in their position, which is a support role. And we can set featured image whenever we want. In this case, we know we already have it. It's just the two cats. All right, and then publish. And so that basically does it for our team section. When we refresh, we'll have our own custom team area where your audience can get to know, you know, the people that make up your brand. There's a lot more you could create within the team section. You could set up a whole page for your whole team and make a button below the section that goes to that page. We just don't have time to do that now because we have to keep moving. In the section below Meet the Founders, we want to have these facts that automatically count when someone visits the site. How cool is that to have these automatically counting stats? So how do we make that? Well, we can go back to our dashboard pages front page that we're working on and of course we need to add row this one's also just going to be one column insert select add widget and now Sydney has a really cool widget for facts so just select the Sydney FP facts all right let's drag them to the bottom and now let's open up facts and this is probably my favorite widget because it's just so darn easy to set up. All you need to do is write in a first, second, third, and fourth fact, and then the icon for them and the amount that you choose. So what I have here is just some basic stats. Um, my YouTube channel has crossed a million page views, which I'm proud of. We've helped over 500 beginners uh, create a WordPress website or blog, and I have about one cup of coffee a day. And this is all done using one great WordPress software. So, you know, whatever you think your brand should highlight, you can be funny or serious or, you know, if you have a competitor and you want to show that you've made more of some widget than them, then do that right here. Go for it. All right, so let's set this up. First, we need a title, and I'm going to call it The Numbers. You can call this whatever you want. First fact name is Page Views. This is the one that's going to show up on the far left of the section. Fact value is 1 million, 1 with 6 zeros. Don't include any commas, otherwise it will break the number. First fact icon is going to come from Font Awesome. And I really like the dashboard, so I'm just going to hit Command Find. Nope, not bookmark, Command Find Dashboard. And there it is. Just need to highlight the FA part, or if you can remember it, we can just write in FA-Dashboard. -dash Whatever is easier for you. I don't know how fast of a typer you are, but hopefully pretty darn fast. All right, for the second name, it's Beginners Helped. And I've helped over 5,000 people create WordPress websites or blogs. Fact icon is going to be the play button. Play button, because all of this has been done through video. Almost all of them. Some of it's been done from the blog. But I think the play icon is a good representation of this stat. All right, there we go. Third fact name. What's that? It's cups of the same great coffee. And, you know, I can't reveal my secret coffee here, but if you want to know, just ask in the comments. I'm going to put in 365 because I have a cup of coffee every morning. Third fact icon is, of course, Command find the coffee, the FA coffee. Copy that, paste it in. All right, so you can see I'm having a lot of fun, and you know I hope you have a ton of fun using the Sydney Facts widget two. Fourth icon name is just um, one great software. Fourth fact value is just one, and fourth fact icon is WordPress. So let's command find WordPress. And there she is. All right, and there's also icons for every type of social media imaginable. All right, paste it in. And what do we want to do now? I want to just click done 
and update. All right, and when we refresh this site, it's gonna show us that we have our numbers right beneath our team. Oh my gosh, this looks brilliant. And because we already set up the links on the meet the team button and the get the facts, so that meet the team goes to the third section, that's one, two, three, third section, and get the facts goes to the fourth section, which is the numbers, people can click them and they'll get taken to the exact right section. Not bad. All right, next we wanna add the beautiful review section, AKA testimonials, right beneath our facts. So we can do that. Just go back to the page editor, add row. We'll make this one just one column and click insert. All right, and then drag it down. Select, add widget, and now Sydney has this outstanding widget for testimonials. So we'll choose that one. All right, and then if we open it up, we can see that there's not too many settings here. The usual title, we can have a button beneath this uh, testimonials area. And that button would need the URL, the text, and if you have a lot of testimonials, you can categorize them and put the name of the category right here. But we're just gonna call this section the reviews and click done and update the page. All right, so your customers are talking, you're getting feedback for your business and we're gonna insert that feedback by going to testimonials on the left navigation and click add a new testimonial. And all I did is gather a few real comments from YouTube and I put them in the review section. So I'm just going to copy them again. It looks like when we grab this, it'll just pull it to the side so we can see more reviews or testimonials. And it's kind of tough to copy. So I'm going to go to my dashboard on the Just a Demo site. Testimonials. Of course, we're making our site as a mere image of Just a Demo, so we can use everything here if we like. And now I'm just going to open up and copy paste. All right, so this review is by Scott. And we can paste in what Scott says. And Scott's from YouTube or YouTube. And that's all we really need. Like I said, if you have a ton of testimonials, you can categorize them and put them in different places around the site if you like. But we're gonna publish this. And if you have an image for the person, you can set that as the featured image. You know, if like someone famous at a famous company says something and you wanna include their headshot so people can recognize them, put it in a featured image. Add new testimonial. All right, and lastly, Siva is a blogger. And they wrote a really nice comment for me on how they moved from Blogger to self-hosted WordPress with my guide and created HostGator through my link. All right, and now publish. Again, you can make these testimonials look as simple or as fancy as you like. And when we refresh the site, now beneath numbers, we have some awesome reviews or testimonials, if you want to call them. Beautiful, great job. Let's check out just a demo and see what we're making next. All right, now we wanna set up the portfolio section, also known as our work. All right, so to do this, back to pages, and we need to add the row for these uh, portfolio pictures. Add row, one column is good, insert, I don't know why it always comes in the second position, but that's just what the row likes to do. All right, drag it down, make sure it's selected, add widget, and now Sydney has this phenomenal, really well-designed, um, where is it now? Portfolio, to display your projects in a grid. All right, so grab him. All right, and now just 
update. And so the portfolio items are called projects. So we need to open this up again and title it. I'm just going to title this our work. And again, you can edit a few of the details in this, you know, widget. But we're going to leave them as they are and click done and update. And now to actually fill in this section, we need to click projects on the left. And we need to add new projects. So, so I bet you're getting pretty good at adding content to WordPress by now. All right, and what I did on just a demo was I found several beautiful photos from around the world. All right, and I just created these sort of project or portfolio templates using them where you could add in as much writing or quotes, you know, data, all sorts of stuff you want to put in there with the featured image. All right, and this is a project. We can see in the links when we make a project, it's called a projects. So to get those images, you can follow me to Pixabay, where we were before. All right, and each one of those images can be found right there. Or if you want, you can just get them from justademo.com. You would just click into the our work item, right click on an image, save image as, and click save. All right, so that would do the job too. If you wanted to find this image, you could look up. Amsterdam in Pixabay and click enter and there it is all right so just a couple ways to getting a beautiful image for your website for free all right and I call each one of these projects so this is project Amsterdam and we just need to set the featured image for now upload files select files and that Amsterdam image is in our desktop open and you might have to find it in your downloads your documents wherever you put your downloads by default set featured image and we're good we just need a new category so this one is going to be called nature add new category and it's also going to be called urban because Amsterdam is a combination of both and publish alright so now when we look at our demo site we'll have one piece of content right there pretty cool. Let's add another one. Alright, so I'm going to add this one for the beach sign. So in Pixabay we could look up beach sign and we find the right image and to get it from Pixabay again just free download, click free download, choose the biggest size and click download. Alright, and then in WordPress, click Add New Project. See, it's all really easy, and you can set this stuff up without any code or any you know difficult stuff. We're gonna call this one Project Beach Beach Sign, and then set featured image, upload, select files, and our image is in our downloads now. All right, select and open and WordPress will do its thing. Alright, great job. Now let's set featured image. And before we publish, we just need to choose a category. And we can also add a new category, like beaches. And click Add New Category. Alright, and now we can add another one. Signs. Add New Category. And publish. Refresh the site, and we're good to go. So in order to make these uh, portfolio items stretch across the whole screen, we need to go back to the dashboard, pages, front page that we're working on, and we need to come to our portfolio row, edit row, the outer row that the portfolio widget sits in, and click layout, row layout, full width stretch this time so it goes all the way across, and click done and update. Alright, great job. Refresh, and now the image thumbnails show up bigger and they go to the end, and as you add more in, it'll fill up the entire screen. And to add the categories at the top so people can click them and get that nice pop in, pop out effect, we just want to open up the portfolio widget itself. And instead of uh, leaving this part blank for the categories, 
we want to write in the real categories like nature, urban, beaches, signs, and whatever categories you want to show. And click done and update. And update. All right, now let's refresh the demo site and we see we have our clickable category buttons. All right, so because I think we got the hang of that, I'm going to fill in the rest of those portfolio items on my own and then we'll move on. All right, so now refresh the website and our work portfolio section is done. Amazing. So next up on the just a demo site for us to make is the who should use this video tutorial section and this tutorial cover section. We'll call this section the data because you can list data points here on the left and you can show off data in a bar chart on the right. And this could be like if you're creating a client project and you're updating them with a progress report, like development could be 85% done and creative design could be 100% and so on. Or this could even be like a movie review where like one group gave it an 85%, another group gave it 92% you can totally use your creativity here. And you can put these sections on any page or just obviously putting them right on the home page. All right, so let's go back to our page editor and create the data section. Add row, and this is gonna be two columns. 50-50 is good, let's insert. And click and hold to drag it down. All right, and then let's select the lower left column and add widget. So for the left widget, we're going to use this clever Sydney FP list widget. All right, so click on it and it'll populate and now click to open. And I'm just going to copy the content from just a demo. So the first thing is the title, who should use this tutorial. And I'm going to paste that in the title bar. And next I'm going to copy the description which just says, everyone can create a diverse and professional website here. Everyone is welcome. Great, and now we need the list items. So you could be fashion bloggers, event planners, fitness coaches, freelance designers, WordPress newbies, business writers, and a couple more things as well. Then to create this list, you just need to add a little um, upper carrot right by each item, like that. Carrot space carrot space and so on all right and this section also accommodates a button if we want but this is good for now let's click done and update and let's refresh and see what we made and we have this really cool list and the carrots turn into stars All right, next let's add our bar chart on the right widget. Click to select, add widget. And now we're going to use the clever Sydney FP skills widget. All right, there we go. Click to add, click to open. And this is a lot like the facts. Just enter in the title, the skill name, and the value. And Sydney will take care of all the moving parts. All right, so first we have how to register your website name. And I consider, you know, that part covered 85%. So we obviously did that in this tutorial and accomplished that. We registered a domain name, but there are a few more tips I could have given you, so I don't think it was 100% covered. All right, so we're going to make that an 85. And the second seal name is how to install WordPress. So, of course, we needed to do that 100%, so you could have your own copy of WordPress. And that second value is 100. You don't need to write in the percent. Third skill, how to make creative content, and I'm giving us a 92 on that. Alright, so this is all just, you know, up to you. Pretty arbitrary. And how to design a professional end product. And we get a 98 on that. And lastly, the title, we'll copy from just a demo, is this tutorial covers, but of course you can say whatever you want. Alright, and done, and update up at the top. Refresh our site, 
and there we go. So it looks really beautiful as is. If you want to keep it with the white space in the background, I, you know, I certainly like that. I think it will be pleasing for your audience. But what we did on the demo site is made it red and gray. So the red matches this red on the bar charts, and it just looks a little bit clever, a little bit more professional, perhaps. Up to you. But I'm going to show you how to make this section exactly. So let's see what's going on behind the scenes in just a demo. Let's click Edit Page. And now let's check out that row itself, which is the list and the skills. All right, so let's open up the outer row first. Edit Row. And we can see that the layout is full width stretched with a top padding of zero. So let's do that real quick. Come back to our list and skills. Hover on the gear, Edit Row, Layout, Full Width Stretched, and Zero. Done. All right, before we refresh, we'll do some more work to save us some time. So we can also see that when we open up the list, all right, this is exactly what we made. But if we click Attributes, there's some CSS styles here. So open up the video notes again and click on the link that says Copy Paste Me and copy in these CS styles I'll have clearly labeled and then just come back and open up your list widget open up attributes and just paste those in and that's all you need to do alright because I wrote the CSS for you click done and then now we're gonna check out the skills widget maybe that has some CSS open it up attributes and it does alright so this is just gonna make it a little bit better centered in the middle of its little widget area. So this will also be in the copy paste me file. Alright, and when you copy it, just come back to the skills, click attributes and paste, and you're good to go. Alright, now let's click done and update, and let's see how it looks now. So we had the white background without the full width stretch and with the padding at the top, and we changed all of that. And now we have this beautiful section that works perfectly. Can't believe we just made that together. All right, next up we want to make a different style of call to action area on your website. And then after that, we're going to set up the home page video. All right, so back to the page editor. Add row. Make this just one column and insert. Drag it down. There we go. Click to select, add widget. And we're going to use the ever so simple Sydney call to action widget. All right, great job. Now that it's in here, we can click to open. And in the call to action widget, we're just going to write in some demo content that came from the Sydney theme demo. All right, so Sydney and A themes have a really great demo, which inspired our demo. So you get two demos to build from. You can just go to the A-Themes website, which is awesome. Click the demo button. All right, and so a lot of this stuff works really well. I just made our demo so we can customize your site, you know, perfectly for us and make it unique. And we're just going to make a call to action section like this one right here. So we can copy that from the Sydney demo or from just a demo.com. All right, copy it. Come back and enter that in the call to action area. All right there. And now the title for the button is discover more. Discover is one of those magical words that always seems to get clicks around the internet. And link for the button. We can just go back to our home page and we can right click on about us and then it'll give us the copy link address option. So choose that and then come back and right click paste that in the link for the button area. All right, and then check display the button in line with the text so that they'll be on the same line together. Click done, update, and refresh the demo site. All right, great job. There's our second call to action area. Simple, but highly powerful. Next, it's time to create the video content for our homepage. 
All right, so this part's extremely easy, but I know that a lot of you have asked me how to embed videos and use videos on your website. So I'll show you how right now. Back to the page editor, click add row. All right, and two columns is what we want now. Click insert, drag it down. So if you hold the widget and you can also, you know, drag down on your mouse or on your trackpad, then that works like I'm doing here. All right, and then let's add the video first. Click on the lower right to select and then add widget. Now to add a video, we can use the site origin editor and we can paste in some embed code from uh, YouTube or Vimeo or wherever you make your videos. Or we can use the Sydney video widget. So Sydney makes it even easier for us to insert a video on a website. So let's select Sydney video and let's see how to use it. We just need to open it up and all we need to do is paste the URL of the video. So what I did is I went to youtube.com alright here's the YouTube homepage and I did a search for how to make if I could type a blog 2017 alright and I got my latest video so to insert it onto the web page just click the thumbnail image this is one of the best. All right, and we have me talking inside a video, inside a video. And then we'll copy the URL from the top. Just copy the URL for the video. Come back to your website and paste it in. All right, we don't even need a title. Just click done and the video will show up. Let's add some text. Click on the lower left widget, add widget. Let's use the simple site origin editor to add our text because it gives us the Microsoft Word features. All right, click to open. And now I've just written some demo content and you can of course write whatever you want. Copy, paste, and make it look good. And a little about me. Then done and update refresh and that's how to set up your homepage video content not too shabby all right you're probably wondering when we were going to create the image slider at the top so let's do that now let's click on the red arrow on the bottom right take us to the top where I had completely forgotten and gotten carried away creating the rest of our website so we're gonna replace the Sydney image slider which is very stylish and nice um, because you need to know how to make your own slider. All right, to do so, let's visit the customize area. In the upper navigation, just click customize. And this would be our first time here, so enjoy. I'll try to show you as much as we can. In the olden days, a lot of the WordPress editing went on in the normal dashboard screens like this with the black uh, navigation and you know the standard WordPress content pages, and nowadays, a lot of that shifting to customize in various themes you might try out later on. So it's really good to know how to navigate customize and some people call it customizer and a lot of people think it's easier. To create the image slider just click on header area and then click on header slider. And we can see we can add up to five images in the slider so we're gonna just add three of them but at the moment, um, the slider is set to a speed of 4,000 milliseconds. In other words, four seconds for one slide to move to the next one. And we can also choose to stop the text slider if we want, which will make whatever text you write on your first slide just stay there for the entire slider. But we're going to keep the text moving so we can write in three different messages. All right, and now in the first slide area, we'll see the beautiful image that Sydney gave us, but we're just gonna remove it and add our own. So click remove. Now come back to Pixabay. All right, and I wanna do a search for Sydney. Great stuff. And we can select this stunning blue image of the Sydney Opera House. Click on free download, choose the original size for the most resolution, and click download. Great job. Let's go ahead and get two more images now for our slider. 
The second one could be found by looking up Wolf Knight. Clicking enter. All right, lots of cool images to choose from, but we want this one right here of the wolf howling to the moon. Pre-download, select original, and click download. So you can see we're going with a majestic nighttime sort of starry night theme here throughout the image slider and some parts of the website. And for the third image, let's try to find it by clicking on the title here. Let's try, let's try starry sky. All right, so that might not have worked. So after searching a little more unsuccessfully, I just had to find the download number of this image, which is 830417. And that'll bring up exactly the image we want, which is wallpaper, background, night, blue, girl, and fiction. And we can click free download, select original, and download. All right, now back to our customize window. In the first slide section, let's click select image, choose upload, select files, and we're gonna bulk upload the three images for our image slider from the downloads folder. All right, that's wallpaper, dog, and Sydney. Click enter. All right, and let's have the Sydney image selected with the check mark and click choose image and it'll fill in automatically. We're gonna leave this nice title text and subtitle text that Sydney wrote for us and move on to the second slide. Click remove and then click select image and choose the howling wolf. Click choose image and there we go. Now let's edit that text so that it says, where is it? Learn how to make a website with mad style. All right, there you have it. And now for the third slide, we'll select image and choose the majestic woman at night and choose image. And this one will say, sit back and relax. We're here to help. All right, sit back and relax. We're here. So you can see that all of this slider and images and text and moving parts can be created without any code just as a total beginner. You just enter it into WordPress and then you can click save and publish when you're ready to see what we made. And let's open up the site in a new tab to leave the customized window open. All right, so there we have it. Our new slider is looking great. Let's uh, let it do its thing and scroll through. All right, so the majestic woman looks good. The Sydney image looks okay. And the wolf looks a little bit off-centered. All right, so to change what part of your image shows up in this slider window, the easiest way is just to edit the media in WordPress. Let's go back to dashboard and let's click media. All right, so let's open one of the images like the wolf and the wolf wasn't showing enough of you know, itself in the slider. So let's click edit image and let's crop this image so that more of the wolf is in the image. All right, it's gonna automatically be on the crop tool when you click edit image. Just click on top of the image and hold and drag to select a new region. All right, and so because we want the moon also, we're only gonna be able to crop a little bit off the top, but it will help. That looks, that looks good. Once you have the right image selection, click in the upper left on this crop button where my little Super Mario hand is, and then click save. All right, now we can close out of this image or click right or left to get to the next image. Let's open up Sydney, and in this case, I wanna show more of the ocean. So this will be a little bit easier because we can crop off the night sky. But the white text on top of the image might show up better if it's on a dark background. 
So that's something for you to consider. You might want to show more of part of the image, but the text might look better on a different part of the image. As you design the website, just consider that. All right, so back to media, and we're going to click Edit Image, and I'm just going to drag some of that night sky off the image and keep the ocean. Make it the full amount. All right, that section looks good, and we're, of course, doing this manually. You could also enter in the exact dimensions on the right or change the aspect ratio. Let me know if you want help with that. But let's just click Crop and Save. I think this image selection will look good. Let's X out, and now let's check out the site and see if anything changed. Let's click the title to refresh. We can see that the images did not change, so we have to go back to customize, and we have to re-add them to our slider. All right, so I'm going to refresh the page, too, so that WordPress understands that we made updates on a different page. We're going to reload it. All right, and now we're going to click header area again, header slider. And what happened is the two images were removed from the slider because we changed them in media, and then it didn't know what image was uploaded because it had changed. All right, so that can happen sometimes, and WordPress will just display whatever content it recently remembers on your site. But to make it perfect, we need to re-add those images to our slider. Just click Select Image. Choose the new Opera House, choose Image. And for second image, select Image, choose the new Wolf, and choose Image. All right, now let's save and publish, and we can refresh the site and see our perfect custom image slider has been created. Not bad. And of course, the click to begin button automatically works. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so next I want to show you how to make the um, client logo section where you could show off companies you've worked with, like brands or you know places you've been featured around the web, their logos, or maybe just sponsors for your next event, that sort of thing. So to set this section up, back to our dashboard pages and of course we're working on the front page let's click edit all right but these could of course go on any page you make and then when we scroll to the bottom we actually get the add widget add row menu stuck to the top which is cool in case we make a really long scroll page like we're doing so we can just add row up there one column is good and click insert and it'd be nice if there was a way to tell it to go right to the bottom. All right, I don't know if there is now, but I'll look into that for you guys. All right, drag it to the bottom, click to select, and now let's click Add Widget. And we just want to grab the beautiful Sydney FP clients. Display your clients list. All right, now just like a lot of our other widgets, it's just um, sort of a placeholder for content we make. We're going to title this, we are going to title this, no title, all right, no title here. Leave this section blank. It could also accommodate a button if you want. Click done and update. All right, now we can go to clients on the left and let's add new client. All right, and because this is a uh, featured icon sort of thing, we're going to start with the featured image. Sorry, guys, the kittens are literally playing right on top of me. All right, and just upload and select. So what you can do is if you've worked, um, you know, if you've written for The New Yorker or for, like, CNN or something, or if you've worked with, like, Four Seasons Resort, you can just look in Google for their best logo, and you can search for nice logos, high resolution, transparent, and just download right through Google. Um, and so what I've done is I've downloaded the logos of the companies that this website is made with. And I have those on my desktop. So that would be HostGator. I'm going to select and hit Command and WordPress and this logo one and also YouTube. This website is made through YouTube. And click Open. All right, and we can start with YouTube. Just make sure it's selected and click Set Featured Image. 
And of course, you could title this. The title won't show up on the home page, but you'll see that in the dashboard. And publish. And you can make this link to the client site right here if you want. So we can write HTTP. I believe that's YouTube's shortened link. And update it. All right, and of course, if you have a ton of clients, you can add categories, and that would help you display only some clients in some parts of the site, like on a page, and only display other clients elsewhere. Add new. For example, I worked on a client site where there was silver, gold, bronze, platinum sponsors, all sorts of sponsors for an event, and that sort of organization might have helped then, although we didn't have it at the time. Set featured image again. Let's grab a themes. Amazing group of really thoughtful, caring developers in the WordPress community. All right, a themes. And if you want to get the link, you can also just look it up in Google. Maybe the A stands for awesome. I don't know. They haven't told me, but certainly could and paste and publish add new client all right set featured image and you can see clicking set featured image first is useful when you're creating one of these icons or profile pictures yes hello Leroy all right and then we're gonna grab WordPress set featured image and title WordPress and publish we don't always need a link Add new client, and lastly, HostGator. All right, set featured image. All right, and we all know all about HostGator now and why they're so amazing. All right, and this one's good to go. All right, and publish. Now we should be all set. Let's refresh the demo site. And we can see we've created our nice um, client logo section. This A themes logo is white, so it needs a different background behind it. Let's go back to the page it's on, front page. So pages, front page. And to make the entire background uh, a nice gray, we can just hover on the wrench, edit row, click design background color and we're gonna go with our trusty EA 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 all right and then let's make this in layout let's make it a full width row so we get the background across the whole row done and update all right and refresh and we're all set great job you can also use custom CSS to make these client logos bigger or smaller. Just let me know if you want to do that. All right, next up on our demo site is the from the blog area where your site can showcase a few blog posts or a lot of blog posts. And that way you can get your content out in the search engine, get people reading it. And when you do that, it spreads the word about your brand and it can help you attract new visitors um, because they read your post and you know they see that you're doing good things for the world and that you just know what the heck you're talking about. It's really helpful to have blog posts to get on the radar of your audience and of the search engines. All right, so back to front page and the page editor. Add row again. We just need one column and insert. All right, drag them all the way down. There we go. I'm getting pretty good at dragging and scrolling. Using a trackpad here though, it's kind of helpful with a huge trackpad. All right, click to select, add widget. And now we're rounding off using almost every one of Sydney's widgets made just for us. And we're gonna use the, da, 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 da. it's funny how when you're looking for it, you can't find it. Latest news, Sydney latest news. All right, all right, then click to open it, and you can title your blog post on the homepage, whatever you want. We're just gonna go with
from the blog. You could only put a certain category of blog posts here and you can have a button which will take someone to the entire blog. So I'm going to do that. Let's just go with the default see all our news that Sydney recommends. I think that looks clickable. And click done. And update. Now we just need to add some new custom blog posts about your brand. So let's click on the posts item in the upper left. It's funny, if we were making a WordPress blog, we'd probably do the post very first um, step, but because we're making a WordPress website, posts come more at the end after we've built out the whole site. All right, WordPress has the nice sample post, which, you know, thanks for making it, but we're going to trash it. And add new. All right, and you just want to get the post flowing. You don't want to, you know, hold yourself back and think you're going to write the perfect post later. It's really important to have one to three blog posts published right when you launch your site. So the first post could be something, um, you know, really simple about your brand, just a simple blog post. And here's where you could talk about your mission statement or your vision or something like that. Maybe some quotes from your founder. Let's give our new post a category. Just click add new category. I'm going to categorize this one under simplicity just in case you want to put this category in your menu or in a different widget and you can only show the simplicity post then on a certain page or a section you get that sort of control all right we definitely need a featured image and we can also drag a particular tool up in our sidebar if we're using it more set featured image and because this isn't a real blog post, I'm just going to use one of our demo images, like these nice simple houses on the beach. Click Set Featured Image and Publish. All right, we also do need some text, though, which will show up on the home page. So let's grab the text. You can always open up the post on justademo.com and grab the content from them. If you want this image of an Apple computer, for example, and we can just copy the text. And paste it in. Pretty cool. Update it. And now when we refresh our site, we should have our first blog post. Published for the world to read. So that's pretty cool. But a lot of people want to only include certain text right here. And not, you know, have WordPress cut off the text with the dot dot dot. So how do we do that? Well, let's say we want to only write up until this Nisi, this part right here. You could go to your blog post, go to the visual tab, and right where you have the cutoff that you want by the Nisi, all right, we're going to click toggle toolbar, make sure everything's open, and we're going to choose insert read more tag. Try that. And it'll give you this more line break. And then click update. And then now when you refresh your blog and scroll down, it's going to cut it off right there. And people should know that they can click on the link or click on the image and read the entire blog post. So that's pretty cool. A little bit more customizability, if that's a word. And you might want to get rid of that space too. You can always get rid of the spacing, update. And that way the post looks a little bit nicer. All right, so just one paragraph and then the second paragraph. And the first paragraph shows up on the home page. Let's add two more blog posts so that our home page uh, from the blog section looks complete. All right, so in the post editor screen, click add new at the top, or you can click add new on the left. All right, and then we can start however you feel comfortable. WordPress is supposed to be a really comfortable place to write and create content. So I'm just going to paste in our text and set featured image next, and then we can think of a good title. All right, I think the cats deserve a blog post, set featured image, and then enter the title. Now let's call this one Five Reasons We Love Kittens. So numbered and list blog posts are sort of all the rave now, and you, know, you might as well include one on your website. All right, category, 
Add new category. Kittens. Add new category and publish. Great job and add new post one more time. We can use either button, it's the same thing. And let's just call this one, don't miss our gallery showing Thursday night. So you can use the blog to keep people up to date on your newest events as well. All right, give ourselves some text. Add new category, which could be events, add new, and then featured image up top. Let's select our Sydney Opera House image because it's so beautiful it should be shown twice and set featured image. All right, so I know I'm just adding the content, like the text and the images really quickly. Don't get me wrong though, I do believe content is king and if you do really craft well-written, compelling content, you can grow your site from scratch because people show up and return for content. They always have and they always will. And I really believe in all my projects that it's in our power to use content to make the website amazing. All right, so now let's just publish. And when we refresh our demo site, at the very bottom, we can see from the blog is complete. It looks a little different with only part of this post, but that's just because we wanted it that way. All right, the final section is to create our get social with us buttons. To do that, let's go back to the dashboard and now let's leave the post editor and go to the pages editor and click front page. And now scroll down and add row, one column, insert. All right, and I'm gonna drag it again. There we go. Click to select it and add widget. All right, and the social icons live in the Sydney FP social profile. All right, so I'm telling you guys, this really is easy. We can select the social profile widget and create this amazing set of social icons without knowing any code or you know building these buttons from scratch or knowing how to get them in the middle of the page or anything. Sydney does that all for us from scratch for free. I guess, yeah, all that, because they love us. So back to the page editor, and we have our social profile at the bottom. We just need to update. All right, because we're adding a lot of stuff. And then let's open up social profile and title it, get social with us, or maybe some different slogan that your team has copywritten. And click done and update again. All right, and this social section actually is kind of tricky. It was tough for me to create at first um, because it's a menu. To make your social buttons, we need to go to appearance and click menus. Now let's create a new menu and we'll call it social menu and click create menu. Now it's time to fill this with some custom links. So let's open custom links. And here we can just start writing out the pages to our social media profiles, or we can copy them from the web. So if I look up Facebook for Dear Blogger, we can get our community Facebook page where you can ask WordPress questions or questions about blogging or how to make a website, how to design a website. And I'm gonna put that right here. Just paste it over the HTTP. All right, and the link text, Facebook, and add to menu. All right, and so we're gonna grab the Twitter now. All right, really cool. Let's paste in that Twitter link. And in my experience, less is more with the social media icons. It's really tempting to include like 10 different icons because they look nice and cute, but you want people to actually visit them and not be so overwhelmed they can't click them. And then when they get there, you want them to actually see the content you're sharing. And it's really hard for me to share content on more than like three networks. So I like limiting this, you know, only putting in a few buttons 
and that way people actually click there and they actually see the right stuff and get engaged. So we're going to go with Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, and YouTube. And just for the heck of it, you know, right, we're, we could go with Instagram and with LinkedIn and stuff, but I don't really share there. So we're just going to go with these three. But the buttons will work for other icons. Just go ahead and try out those different links you run. And if it recognizes an Instagram link, then it'll show an Instagram button, that sort of thing. All right, so you don't need to put this menu in a location. We just need to save it. And then we need to come back to our pages area, front page. And at the bottom, we need to click social profile to open it. And now from select your social menu, we can select social menu, which we just made. And we can just click done. All right, let's check it out on the site and then we'll restyle it. All right, so it's pretty nice. We got three buttons. But we actually want those buttons to be white and the background to be this nice Sydney red. So how did we do that? I'm going to log into just a demo because I forgot. All right. All right, bear with me. Edit row, and I believe that's where our design is. All right, for the design, we want background color. I'm going to copy our color so we get it perfect. And for layout, we wanted a top bottom 50 padding and full width. All right, pretty easy. And for color, we wanted white. All right, so that's two changes in design and two changes in layout. All right, so now we can go back to our demo site that we're building. Click on the wrench icon to edit the outer row. And then let's make those changes. For background color, let's paste in our Sydney red. All right, and it'll find itself. And then for color, we're going to choose white from the bottom. All right, and then we can close design and open layout. Now enter in a 50 in top bottom padding and row layout full width. And done. And update. Now we'll refresh our demo site and see how our Get Social With Us section looks. And it looks very professional. But you can test that the links work. All right, and they do. People will get a new tab opened to your social media pages of choice. All right, great job, everyone. All right, with our social icons in there, we've now made about 98 or 99% of the demo site. We've created all the features from just-a-demo.com. And if you look at this site, then it'll look exactly like your site. And if it doesn't, then let me know right away and I'll put that, you know, fix in there and explain anything because I can forget things. Um, you know, we're all human. Um, but I want to edit the site title and the site tagline before we go. And then we're going to get a bonus section where we add all of our content into the sub pages and create a footer and create a sidebar. I figured that'd be good for a bonus section. Just because our goal today was to create the entire demo site and we've done that and some people like a little bit more, you know, follow up on a tutorial, a little more content and that'll be a nice bonus for those people. All right, so to create the site title and site tagline, we can just go to page editor and now let's come to settings general. And in this section, we can just change the site title right here and the tagline right here. So we want to call this, of course, Sydney Powerful Business Website. And that was lowercase, all right? Keeping it casual. All right, and save changes. And now when we refresh, those will show up right at the top. All right, great job. And I saw one more change. I know a few of you guys probably did too, which was the border on the, you know, the layout builder for the what's your next move buttons. 
So we accomplish that in the demo site by putting a border on the layout builder call to action widgets, which was in design. They each had a, where would that be? Border color of our standard EA, EA, EA gray. All right, so let's go back to pages, front page, and then layout builder, first call to action. Under widget styles, click design, and let's set the border color, which is pound sign EA, 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 and click done. Same thing for the second call to action, design, border color, pound sign EA, EA, EA and click done and done and update all right now let's refresh and we get those nice borders on our clickable buttons if you see any other mistakes that we made uh, let me know in the comments below if you see any other revisions or additions or just cool features that we should have added then let me know as well I believe that's everything though and like I said, in the bonus section, we're going to add the footer, we're going to add the sidebar, and we're going to add content to our individual subpages. All right, so there you have it, guys, how to make a WordPress website with the beautiful free Sydney theme. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching, because I really enjoyed making this. And uh, yeah, enjoy your days, and enjoy your new websites.